Hey guys, today I'm demonstrating a thermal mass battery that will radiate heat. It's very simple to make. You can usually make it with things you can find around your home that you may already have. And one of the key components is carbon felt. It's something that can burn indefinitely, maybe years or even possibly more than a decade without completely being burned up much like a candle wick with. So this is one of the key components and I've demonstrated it in other videos, but I'm going to demonstrate it a little bit differently today. So everyone knows what an electrical battery is. It's a device that stores electrical energy. This is going to be a thermal battery and it's going to store heat. Now in a previous video, I showed how to store thermal heat in a used cat litter container that's been painted black and I use them around the greenhouse to help store that energy from the sun. I'll link that video up above. So that's just a super simple way to do it. That's completely passive, but this system is going to be more of an active system. Now concrete is a perfect example of how to store energy from the sun in thermal mass. As your driveway heats up during the day, the concrete gets really hot. Sometimes you can't even walk on it if it's the right time of year. But in the evening, as the sun sets and goes away, you can sometimes still feel that heat radiating from the concrete. And a lot of times it depends on the thickness of your concrete too, as to how long that heat will radiate. But that's what we're essentially doing today. We're creating a heat source and then we're storing it in another source. Now, as I mentioned just a second ago, there are two types of thermal storage batteries. One is active and one is passive. So my goal in making this is to combine the two active and passive and allow it to store the heat with a minimal amount of effort and the middle amount of cost. So there's different types of media that can store this heat. One, of course, is water and the other is sand. Water is great, but it has some limitations as far as the temperature it can rise to before it becomes steam and then it evaporates and over a, several, several hours of doing this, you're going to lose a lot of your media. On the other hand, sand can be heated up to over 1000 degrees and you won't lose any of the sand and you'll retain that heat slowly being released over a period of time. Now a solar to electric type of setup on this would be great, but a lot of people don't have access to solar panels. This is just kind of one of those things you might put in a small greenhouse, a hoop house, a very small room that's well vented and it has a lot of safety equip equipment like a smoke detector, a carbon monoxide detector, and a fire extinguisher. So the genesis of this idea came from a Swiss company that's actually created this on a massive, massive scale. They've taken the energy of the sun and transferred that energy electricity from the sun into a massive container of sand something like the type of maybe a grain silo and heated the sand through this solar electric power and over a period of time that energy heats an entire larger than an olympic swimming pool so there's a lot of heat that can be stored in this and it can be used over a long period of time so as I said earlier, there's a lot of debate going on as to what media to use. I'm preferring to use sand because it will not boil away like water will, and it will still retain the heat. Water probably actually will absorb the heat better and slowly release it, but then you have the issues of if it gets too hot, then you have the boiling away, and this can take extreme heat and slowly release it even if your heat source goes out. Now again, you can use electrical heating elements or a gas stove to heat the sand up inside of the container. But what I'm trying to do is use something as if I did not have access to gas or electric and heat it up through a very simple method and then let it radiate that heat out into a very small room. We're not talking about heating it extremely hot either. We're talking about just keeping it slightly above 40 degrees. We're not talking about 72 to 80 degrees. This is not going to heat a house like you would with a regular heating system, but it's just an emergency system such as a hoop house. You don't want your seedlings to freeze or you have a great, very small greenhouse and you don't want your plants to be frozen by a sudden frost. This is something you could do. You could actually do this on the stove, take it out to your small hoop house or greenhouse, and it would continue to radiate that heat out throughout the night and prevent your seedlings or small plants from dying from frost. So let's get started and I'll show you how to put this all together. It is really super simple and it only takes a few components to make it work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Dutch oven and I'm going to add a piece of about two inch pure copper and I'm going to make sure I've folded it, formed it, and I have this sitting on the bottom right where our felt candle is going to be heating the pot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the lid, which can be inverted like this, I'm going to make sure that it sits just like that so it's coming in contact with the copper. The copper is actually pushing up a little bit on this lid. And there, I just don't, I don't want a big gap around it. I want there to be 
I want there to be minimal air escaping from this system as possible. And I'll put a link to where you can get one of these in the description. It's probably the perfect type because it does have that invertible lid. Some of the lids have a handle on it, and that would be a problem with this one because it would take up too much room down below and mess, mess up our copper and make it hard for it to touch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some sand. It's very dry sand, so it's going to be very easy to go all the way around the copper. If this was wet sand, it would not work. So you're going to need to use dry sand because it would be much harder to get it into the pot. And the reason we're using the copper is the sand might act as an insulator and prevent the heat from the very bottom to getting to the very top. We want the pan, the lid that's sitting in there on top of the copper to get very hot so it can operate another component of the system. Now I've dusted some of our sand away from the top to make sure it is exposed because the lid is going to come in contact. I can feel it pushing on it, so I want to make sure that there's a good contact between this lid and the copper. The copper is going to conduct the heat from the very bottom of the pan, the Dutch oven, to the very top where this is sitting. Now I'm using these glass jars just for the purpose of the video, but I would recommend making a more stable structure so that the pan will not fall. It's not a chance of it getting knocked over. I've got some pipe that I'm going to pick up next week and I'm going to make a more stable base for the Dutch oven, but unfortunately I haven't had a chance to do that. So I just wanted to put this together so you can kind of get the concept very easy. Now also this felt wick candle, I'll put a description up above that shows exactly how to make this and the fuel is simply vegetable oil. It can be used vegetable oil or brand new vegetable oil, but if you get access to used vegetable oil, you might be able to get it free from a fast food place that just disposes of it. So just remember, you don't have to use new vegetable oil. And I believe one of the cleanest burning oils is olive oil. So if you want something that absolutely burns without any smoke at all, you can use olive oil, but I'm just using a standard vegetable oil. Okay, we've got our Dutch oven in place. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna light our candle and allow it to start heating the base And remember, when you start this type of wick with using the, the plumber's felt, you may have to add a little bit of rubbing alcohol to it to get it to ignite and heat up the copper pipe and draw your vegetable oil up so you'll have a good flame going. So just remember, you either use that, you can use your regular vegetable, drip it on there and light it, but I think a little bit of rubbing alcohol works best. Now, the size of this flame is quite a bit larger than you would find on a candle, and it kind of varies as to how much it's wicking, but it's going to work a lot better than just a standard candle. It's going to heat our Dutch oven up quite a bit. I just wanted to show you from this angle how it's just been lit, and it's just started to burn, and as the candle gets hotter and hotter, it will have a little bit larger flame. You're not limited to one candle. You could use two or three candles, depending on what kind of base you make. If you use a Dutch oven like this, you can go up to a larger size, but just remember you're not limited to only one candle, so you could triple the heat output just by increasing your candles. Now I'm going to add a thermoelectric fan to the mix, and this fan operates based upon heat. When it gets hot at the base, this fan motor is controlled by that heat and it will start activating and it will push just a very slight breeze around the small area you have. So if you're using something like, like I said earlier, a small greenhouse hoop house or a very small room, this will circulate the heat around there and not just in the immediate vicinity of the Dutch oven. Now I've given it less than an hour to heat up the lid to our Dutch oven and you can see that there is some air movement. This is not like an electric fan where you're going to have massive air movement, but this will circulate a small amount of warm air in a small area, but you can see that the lid is now heated from the candle below and this could literally go for hours and hours these candles do not burn the oil quickly. So in some cases, it could be 12 hours before the candle completely goes through. Even that small amount I showed you, less than a cup. It burns very slowly, but it's very, very large flame compared to a candle. All right, so we're about, not quite 200 degrees, but it's getting close. So you're not only limited to this type of setup. I'm going to show you how you can also do it with a portable gas stove, and it works just as well if you were RVing, camping in a tent, and you could have this in your car as an emergency backup heater. So some of the heat might escape because we have this lid removed and we can put that directly on the copper as it's very hot. And luckily this has a handle that I can use. You can use that just like that, but I prefer to have it with a lid because it traps in the heat just a little bit better. Now, another way you can use this is you can use a portable gas stove. These are great in power outages. They burn very clean. It uses the small gas canisters like this, 
and you could just take your Dutch oven and place it directly on the flame, burn it for let's say 20 to 30 minutes, let the sand heat up, and then that will disperse the heat over a period of hours and the fan, which is totally non-electric, will circulate the air in a small area. So it really is one of those things that works great. If you want one of these, I'll link it down below. It's not excessively expensive. I had to order mine directly from Korea and it was quite a bit more expensive a few years ago. It's now sold on Amazon, so it's a lot cheaper. So guys, the final say is, is that it will reach to some really hot temperatures and in the immediate vicinity, you can feel it. You can also feel the heat moving away when you use this type of fan. I'll put links to everything down below, but this is not gonna take the place of your furnace. This is just a device used for a small hoop house, a very small greenhouse, very small room that's well ventilated, that has all the safety equipment you need, like a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, and a fire extinguisher. Make sure you have all of those before attempting anything like this. And just do a little bit of experimentation and you might find that it works better than you expected. So anyways, guys, if you found something useful, I hope you'll like and subscribe and have a great day.